and uh, hello everyone hello everybody welcome to the stream welcome to one final uh loser bracket today we're going to have a match between swag lord uh who's going to be seed eight versus cute kittens against the uh, uh seed 19 and uh today i'm going to be with uh Subaru arima welcome here hey there hey there thank you crystal for this beautiful introduction to the both of these teams today so as you mentioned a bit of a seeding difference if we look at both of these teams swag alerts on paper looking at the overwhelming favorites in this matchup however it is meant to be mentioned that q kittens has been so far on a pretty good run in loser bracket and they have a very solid team when it comes to early to mid stage in, in terms of consistency so i think we can expect some surprises on some of these maps at the very least swag alerts also had a very, very rough defeat last week against Ryu Nation, losing 5-1 and one against the ninth seeded team in the tournament. So, yeah, on paper, maybe not looking like a closest match, but I'd keep my eye open for surprises. Yeah, and definitely having some Maple elements here and there that could favor some teams. Uh, I know, for example, that there's quite a bit of aim in this, uh, in this Maple. In terms of speed, there's definitely less than usual. And so, I think overall, with this map pool, we can expect some uh, upsets going on here and there, uh, depending on the strength of each team. And uh, I think that's going to influence overall the matches. However, for this match, I think we can expect like some kind of pretty straightforward uh, type of match. I think we're going to have a lot of gimmicks on the side of Swag Lords. And Kukidens will definitely be favored around the mechanics. Uh, but we'll have to see. And for now, we're still going to see the big order, ban order, and stuff. And uh, we're chilling. Yeah, on the side of uh, Kukidens, I really hope they have a full roster this week, as they were missing players last week. Of course, it was an easier match, so they didn't struggle that much, but still. For a match this important for them and there's in their losers bracket run you definitely want them to have a full roster to face swag lords as we already casted a couple of matches of cute kittens but it, it's our first time commentating swag lords so we can probably introduce some of their players we have very recognizable faces in their roster mostly a canadian roster with the exception of donut who is a very well-known player from uruguay if i'm not mistaken yep and uh, you will recognize a few faces that have appeared on the OC World Cup team for Team Canada, such as Vesperit or Sari. Sari, I believe, has has played once in 2022, and Vesperit twice in 2023 and 2021. Sorry. Yeah. And uh, when it comes to cute kittens, of course, they need no introduction. They have been present in the early stages of this tournament and putting out insane performances. We have recognizable faces and their core roster, such as plays from, plays from Hungary, like uh, Jesse Body, Saba, Defi, French player Lexanox also being a gimmick specialist for them, Weichel also pulling a lot of work for them, so a couple of recognizable faces that could be feared in the early to mid stage of a tournament, which is the case, so I'm really, really hoping for a close match. Yeah, I mean, both of the teams are really strong, I think, on mid, uh, mid stage. I think there are like skill cap will be around that type, that type of stage. Uh, we also have like too slow. You haven't mentioned uh, too slow, but too slow is like on the row on the on the tournament scene so far. And uh, overall, just having a, quite a lot of uh, great faces on the side of Swag Lord. We're already going to see a DT4 ban from Swag Lord, and it's going to be the the old weird DT4, uh, it's pretty close to Excess, uh, if you know the map. I mean, it's from the same artist. It's extremely... I think it's... It can be very, very difficult, uh, on kind of sense. Not going to be 10.3, but still feared by the Swag Lords overall. Yeah, that's definitely an understandable ban. It's the gimmicky DT, as you mentioned. And, of course, you wouldn't want to go gimmick against a team like you Kittens. Normally, even if you have a pretty good roster, it's much of a gamble, especially on maps like DT4. Uh, it's definitely the type of map where you want to be absolutely comfortable in picking it. So if you're not, you might as well ban it, which is the case here for Swag Lords. Totally makes sense. 
And we are waiting for the ban coming out of Cute Kittens. Maybe something more mechanics based would be a nice ban on the side of Cute Kittens. Mm, you think? I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't expect from uh from Cute Kittens, Kittens actually banning into HD two, for example. Oh, they they have a good well, Swag Lords. They have a really good hidden roster, so that that could make sense as well. That you're very right pointing that out. Yeah. We have players. Vesper has been taking hidden, for example, and this mentioned previously mentioned Osu World Cup Canada team. You also have players who are fairly good at reading. One player we haven't mentioned also very consistent non-cycle on pretty much most skill sets. He'll be stepping in, putting down solid scores. But then yeah. again, they all, they also have a pretty good speed roster, so that's what that's what I would be expecting. And there's going to be a Hard Rock Three ban. Okay, Hard Rock Three being one of those all maps. There's not a lot of odd in this map pool. It has been mentioned in the map pool feedback. That's going to be a uh, uh, Tatakai, I believe. A uh, Tatakai from uh, from Oseki no Kuni that will be banned. Uh, yeah, very alt -hature. it's potentially one of those hardest maps in the pool. And so again, if you're not comfortable on those maps, it has to be expected to be banned. And uh, I think this is pretty like not similar to DT4, but this is those kind of maps that both of the teams actually don't want to want to see. Maybe free mod 4 could be banned for, for Swag Lord, banning more alt. Uh, it, could be, it could be possible, they could also ban Maybe, maybe into the speed, that's going to be a TT2, as it was mentioned, uh, full raw speed gaming band against cute kittens. I think it's extremely fair. Yep, and we're going to get pretty much started in this match, so this is going to be a TT2 second ban. I think on the side of cute kittens, we shouldn't be getting any big surprises you call the potential hidden ban, the potential aim ban. You have quite a few options. Of course, these are when we're going to hit the longer matches, more strategy, more bans. So teams are taking their time. No. But I mean, it's it, it could be a HG2. It could be a yeah, no no, it's not actually. That's and going to be the custom song band. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a heartbreaker. That's a heartbreaker. You hit this. You hate to see it. The custom song being banned. Quite uh, amazing map. Well, it had really the we kept the 190 BPM, but definitely a big increase on the flame requirement compared to last week. So very very yeah. tricky. Yeah. Also the last key, I just you know you can have a lot of surprises, but just it's the so spacing. Changes. Yeah, the, the space changes is so complicated to handle, and so if you hard choke on every on every note, literally on the, at the last part, why would you keep this open? So. I mean, again, if you have a weak roster, I think those those maps besides DT2 are definitely more like cons uh, like comfortable bands. And like, if you re really are not comfortable, just like DT4, HR3, Noma2, it's definitely not the type of bands you would usually see in like pure pure strategy type of uh, of match. But this is the type of maps that you would see if you have like overall good rosters here and there. But then there's a map where no, there's this is not happening. Uh, I'm still a little bit heartbroken to not see our custom song being played in this match, but we're going to get over it. Opening up with a Noma 3 pick on the side of Cute Kittens. So they have played Noma 3 in the past weeks and gotten very, very decent scores. So that pick definitely makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And I do expect to see most of their core roster we've, saw, we've seen last week. So someone like Jess Body, Lexanox as well, could probably be playing this. Hmm. Definitely. I mean, we've just seen the uh, Noma 2 ban. Honestly, it's heartbreaking, but Noma 3 is one of my preferred, uh, personally. So seeing it already right off the bat as an opening pick is a big W. Uh, a custom song, a uh, custom, not custom song, custom map from uh, uh, Right Teason. And uh, it's, a, it's a very well appreciated map. And so seeing it already as the first map is not very surprising and uh, very of course flowing and sensitive but you do have some guys here and there uh, on the on the raw aim that can be very very tricky to hit and you and you have it quite a bit of time so if you choke those patterns I think your, your score can be pretty low in this map. 
Yeah, I'm really, really happy to see Artisans shine as a mapper in this map pool because if you've been following the tournament scene globally for the past few years or so, you definitely would have recognized Artisans' name. A very, very notable player in tournaments from Singapore. Has been part of the o Osu World Cup Singapore roster for many, many years, so... But I think he slowed down on tournaments these last maybe year and a half, two years, but very, very noticeable player, so I'm very happy to see him shine here as a map pool. So here we go. And uh, pretty unrecognizable. Uh, unrec <laughs> okay, never mind. Uh, yeah, start over. You got it. Don't worry. Yeah, a player that we don't usually recognize in the in the team of cute kittens is going to be uh, Nicolite. Uh, I don't know if he made a lot of appearances so far in this uh, oh god, in this matches, so but misses. oh my god, there's a ton so of many misses. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Alright, so it looks like this map opener is being a bit of a struggle for both teams, actually. Only one full combo remaining in the entire lobby on Sari, which is also a double S, so... A lot of, a lot of comfortable, comfortable, really, really comfortable scores so far on the side of the... I almost called them Team Canada because pretty much all of them are Can Canadian players, but... There is Donut as well, so I will not do that, but yeah. Swaghorn yeah. so far having the better start on this Nomaki map. Sorry he's gonna break though, but it is traded by two players on the side of two kittens, three now, but pretty girl, oh, all right. I'm, I'm just gonna tr stop trying to follow because just everyone is collapsing in this lobby right now, so I think I can say that Defi and Spicy are holding combos, but that's probably gonna not be true in about five seconds. Yeah, and you see those Kias that we, we can see few players throwing on those. We have Rekko, we have Lexanox, we have also Pretty Girl and Uncycle breaking on those, but we do have a 1v1 between Defi and Spicy, so far it's going to be the first match in the match. And uh, Sari also with a, with a big support hit call, apparently going to be one of those main scores to support uh, Spicy, but not anymore. And Non-Cycle also breaking. Pretty Girl is still here on the big combo, but now Defi is going to oh, trade. Defi trading. A, oh, that's a big trade. Pretty Girl is traded going. by Pretty Girl, though. So it's only Sari and Lexanox and Indiglet are starting to recover, so it, they can just about match the big combo on Sari. And she's definitely looking like the most comfortable player on this map so far in the entire lobby. She was holding that double S in the intro and now has recovered quite comfortably, so... We're going to reach that last third of the map, and Weckl is going to find a very, very avoidable miss, sadly. Yeah. And still, Lexanox and Inlicolet tried trying their best to match Sari's score. It is about a 130k difference, and it's been steady for about 30 seconds now. It's all going to depend on those misses in the final section. Yeah. Here we go. For potential comeback, Sari pretty much has to break. Uh, I see pain misses. Soon. It is traded by Lexanox, one of the big combos on Cute Kittens. Uh, Nicolette for now is going to be the most heavy hope for cute kittens against uh, Sari. One of those Sorry, breaks. misses! Ooh, Nicolette. Oh, but it's traded. It's it. traded by Wetko. Yeah, but, but it is Nicolette and Defi now with the two big combos. Uh, there's not enough time. We're we are we are talking about, about nothing right now. There's literally not enough map there. Yeah, sadly not enough density in the map to make something happen here. Lead is going to de decrease a little bit. Not so much anymore with Defi's miss actually, but. There was the opportunity, and, and Dicklet actually, I believe, almost top scoring for his team. Has not played last week, as a reminder. And all right, not quite top scoring. Defi is slightly above, but still a very nice score, 500k for Dicklet. But yeah, it's really just a slight consistency difference, really making the difference in terms of scores between these two teams. Overall, Swaglord's just slightly being better on every single score because you don't you don't really have that big pop off performance. No full combo. I mean, you have great accuracy on Sari, but she's not that far ahead of the best score on the side of Cute Kittens. It's just really that consistency difference. Difference. Sorry, making the difference. On yeah. That first lottery pick. Yeah, just getting like three hundred, uh, three four hundred k was mostly the the game changer here for Swaglord. Not by too much, so I can understand why it was a first pick. It's going to be already in a break point, but that's an opening pick. Honestly, it could definitely happen to anybody. And yeah. here we are with Swaglord's pick. Honestly, there's quite a lot of maps that I can pick. It's true that we have seen quite a few opening picks being break point in, in this tournament, so we could have a surprise on the side of Swaglord as well. But... Not the best start for the match on the side of Cute Kittens, sadly. Losing their first pick and not to wide margin, so 
has to be a little bit frustrating, but I hope they can get back in their matches. It is going to be a 3 mod 3 pick on the side of Spike Wars. Hmm. And, That's... Uh, I'm okay. very, very happy to see that map because for our anti-mod free mod map this week, we have a very well-known song if you're in the Geometry Dash community, actually. Very, very famous demon yeah. level. So it's really fun to see it mapped here for Osu Tournament. Uh, yeah, also my by Averia. Uh, been mapping quite a lot for those retro, uh, Resurrection Cup maps overall. And uh, been insane so far. And yeah, free mod 3 is going to be the entire mod on e rates CS5. Quite a classic, but at the same time not too classic. We do have some spicy sliders here and there. Uh, the density of this map can be quite insane. And so I would expect two kittens potentially going three HRs, one HD, as Lexinox will at least go HD. And for Swag Lords, we could expect more HD, but at the same time HD on this map can be quite tricky. Basically, it's an awkward name map with the end time on requirement. So, you got, you got some tricky sliders as well on the map, but it's basically this awkward aim consistency check for if you're hitting hard rock players. It's going to be basically a nightmare. I, I would argue it's one of the hardest maps on the map. Mm, yeah, one of those. This is going to be the hardest map in the pool. Definitely not. But it's one of those maps that you have to be extra careful to put your. You know, to put well your roster and stuff, and definitely asking for 3 HRs, 1 HD on 3 kittens doesn't surprise me. Yeah. And just, you know, 3 uh, kittens going all in for the HR, it has to be expected. Yeah, I'm gonna get in that, this opening pick on the side of Smart Loops, and again, I'm so happy to see that map being picked. And it looks like it's gonna be 3 hard rocks, 1 hidden, as it was called in chat for cute kittens. One. Hard Rock Hidden actually on the side of Too Slow, one no mod for non cycle. And one hidden, one hard rock, so I don't think you could call this an over mod, but it is a slight over mod on the side of Too Slow. Yep. I don't think it can be a huge difference maker in terms of score, as long as football comes on and maintained. Yeah, also no mod is not allowed. So it's an AG. Yeah, hidden. Yeah. So it is a slight okay. mod. I was I was scared that <laughs> we would change drama, but no. Drama, drama saved. Drama saved. Let's go. And we are going to see quite a few misses in this opener, actually, on the side of Q-Kittens, notably. And no full combos now, actually, on the side of Q-Kittens. With Michael dropping, that was the final one. Oh. We are going to see Indicolid really tanking the accuracy, sadly. And so far, the comfort is looking better on the side of Swagglewoods, as we are seeing combos dropping as well. But the accuracy difference is massive on some of these players. Lexanox dropping below 95 and the Nicola be those 90% mark actually, so not gonna be the best opener in this map for two kids. It's already a 200 k difference. Oh Defi, Defi is going to find a break. Oh. Already traded by two stars, so pretty much no big combo left. And that's going to be favored very well for Swag Lord. They got quite the score lead just before that uh, big KI and that's going to do them a lot of favor. I don't know. I don't know if there's still time to come back. That score lead is quite enormous. And yeah, and the map is very short as well. No, no big combo are left on Kittens. I think that's already a GG for this match. Uh, for this map, not for this match yet, but for this map, it's going to be and Sunrod is going to consolidate that break point with uh, with a decent lead. I can not the greatest lead of all time, but they're going to take it very very nicely. Yeah, very nicely. I mean, it was really only Defi trying to put up something, top scoring the lobby. So nice score on Defi, but sadly didn't didn't have the backup at all on the side of his team. And overall, nobody was really comfortable in that map. We see multiple messes for every single player, but the accuracy difference is telling of how much more comfortable Swag, Swag Lords were on this opening pick. So it is going to be a consolidated breakpoint and a 2-0 lead for Swag Lords, as it is now again Cute, cute Kitten's turn to pick. So if you really want to make that one count, because you can't really afford to lose that one, or else it's going to be starting to look really dire. Mm, yeah, what could it be? It could be on TT3. Uh, the full burst pick, I think, can be nice for cute kittens going directly into speed. Um, they could go for a free mod. I know they do have quite the free mod roster. They could go for an HR. Or, and this is where you have to go for something, I think they, they will have to start to search for the game. 
and see if they can win on it. And so if, if they can win on aim, they can try to build a strategy behind those sticks. Yeah, that could work, but you really have to hope that they're not skill capped because otherwise it's going to be looking pretty bad for them. Yeah, true. Because we are getting those hard map pulls. If you look at the star rating difference on the Nomad ones, it's only a 0 .0 0.2 difference. So it's not the most massive difference you've ever seen, but it's still noticeable enough so that it couldn't be a difference maker. And it is, in fact, going to be the hard map one pick. So you mentioned it. You called it the aim pick. Yep. Full, full aim, honestly. Uh, it is pretty much a, a normal one, but you decided to put HR on it, uh, giving also a very funny star rating on this map. I'm not going to mention it. But, yeah, uh, it will remain unmentioned. Yeah, never mentioned. Never mentioned. But that's going to be on HR1. Very classic. Very, very classic. So we're going to be Customer. getting in our consistency aim map. Uh, they really need to make this one count, as I said, because it's your typical aim map. Uh, basically, higher BPM than Nomad 1, which you tend to see often. We're at 2, 12 BPM, so snappier than your average consistency aim map, but it's basically hard up 1. You've seen it a dozen times. You know what to expect when you come into this map, so you've got to be ready. Yep. And, uh, and a custom map also from Flame Ace. So thanks for mapping this. Very, very classic, but it's a classic for a reason. And uh, here we are into this H1 again. If they win this and with a quite a lot of score lead, Kukins could build a strategy and could come back in the score. If it doesn't work, though, that's going to be a pure disaster. Let's be honest. Yeah, you don't really want to be down 3 0 in the start of the match with the own pick of the rear opponents coming, because that would just be disastrous, as you called it, though. Hopefully they can make something happen here and get themselves on the board as we are getting in this map opener. We are going to see much of the core roster. Once again, actually no changes on the side of Cute Kittens and we are going to see two early misses on the side of Weckle and Indigolet. Yeah, I wonder if Saba... It is Saba here in the, for yeah. this match. I'm very surprised to not have seen that neither Saba nor Jessabody as they have been determined on the first rounds as much of the score givers for this team. We're going to see three misses on the side of Spy Wars, so that's going to even things out a little bit more. Defi still holding on this full combo, really putting up a solid performance so far in this match, being matched by Sari, also probably the star player so far for the team's Spy Wars. Yeah, overall, Defi on HR, you, you don't really want to match you want, against You don't want to mess with Defi on HR. On HR. Yeah, well, uh, that's Never going mind, to happen. actually. <laughs> that's going I'm to so happen. I'm so sorry. It's it's very sad, but Sari is going to be the, the big combo on the side and Never mind. that curved. <laughs> uh, that's going to be a wreck and no big combo besides Lexanox against Freligo and to the slower. Both of them are going to hold quite the score in favor of Swag Lords and uh, Indicolite is going to quatch around this map so far. Yeah, how about that? Two for two full combos being claimed by Crystal. Well done. Oh well God. done. And now oh it's only God. Lexanox and Pretty Girl with any combo. Oh, and I'm so nice. sorry, Lexanox. I apologize. I'm not just playing. gonna stop talking about you for the rest of the match. And so it is Pretty Girl with a 4 450 combo, doing the work right now for Spyglers. Be basically being the difference maker, as there are no combos to speak of except for Defi's recovery. And Pretty Girl's on this now, so maybe nice. that could make something happen. It's only a 70k difference. There's a lot of commentator curse so far in this H1, and I think we're going to, are going to keep it happen. And Defi is for now on the 400 combo, the biggest combo in the room, with uh, Indicolite also trying for a comeback. Uh, Indicolite is going to miss, traded by two slow, so it's not going to be too bad for a trade. And uh, as Defi does have the biggest combo, and so this H1 is really contested. Yeah, very, very consistent. Destined, sorry. And Pretty much the image of the Nomad 3 earlier, very, very close scores, and actually, for the first time now, going to flip in the favor of Cute Kittens with that score lead. Slowly but steadily rising, and Defi's going to miss, Langsonox is going to miss, oh my god, three-way miss, full reset actually on the side of Cute Kittens, and it's only it's only traded by two people on the side of Spyglers, so it's Pretty Girl, never mind, it's not Pretty it's Girl, not pretty it is girl. Spicy with a 100 combo, you can make something happen. It is not Pretty Girl, and Lexanox and Defi are going to be here for now with the biggest combo, but what biggest combo it is when you only have 100 combo against Sari. Honestly, those combos are so low that they are not going to matter so much. And 
what an unbreaking is going to be. Sorry, with the real recovery, potentially be the game changer on this Frozen Atro one. Uh, it is going to be very good at the end. Yeah, you talk, about, you talk about commentators, Curse, but honestly, with how much the players have been struggling on this map, I don't, I'm not sure it's a valid point where they've just been missing so much and really, really hard to find a consistent combo. We've seen something happen on the side of Sari, on the side of Deppy, but no real big, big, massive combos holding mm. the score lead in the favor of the team. No. It, is still, it is still ridiculously close in the final section. It is going to come down to his last misses. Deppy's going to miss. Traded by too slow. It's only a 2k difference. Pretty Girl's going to miss. It oh is so God. close. Okay. And it's going back slightly in the favor of Cute Kittens. Who's going to take it? It's going to be on accuracy at the end. At the end it's going to be Ak. Ak yeah. misses on the la last pattern of the map. It is so close. A bit more breathing room now with the 15k difference in the side of Cute Kittens. It looks like they might be doing this if they can just hold towards the end of the map. That's too slow has a good combo. That's a, that was really close. Honestly, it could have def definitely been in favor of Cute Kittens, but that's going to be Swag Girl's point. I was extremely close, but the score from Pretty Girl did make the difference for Swag Girl. It's a very nice try from Defi. Honestly, on Defi on Nature so far has been exceptional. You that's hate not going to, see to matter. It. It's so it's it's so heartbreaking. Both of their picks being lost in such close fashion, especially this one. Only about twenty k difference in the favor of Swag Lords, as you said. The opportunity definitely was there. We did see some struggles on the side of Indicolid and Wickle towards the end of the map. And Defi, as you mentioned, doing everything he possibly could. Once again, top scoring the lobby, but it is not going to be enough. Defi is actually re playing really, really good. Yeah, and a four hundred k from Lexanox like, also trying his best, but. It's not going to be enough at two skins. I think overall in terms of team performance is a bit lower compared to Swaglord, who is a little bit more united. Uh, they do kick a kid overall. And uh, what's going to be the next pick for Swaglord? Honestly, that HD2, I am smelling it very, very heavily. Could be also no mod 5, that gimmick map. I think those maps are just going to hurt a lot to kittens and there's not a lot that they can do against. I mean, they really have to hold mentally because losing your second pick when the opportunity definitely was there to get yourself on the board and stop the bleeding, that has to be hard to deal with. So, yeah, they're going to be mm -hmm. pulling out the Fremont one pick. More Fremont. More Fremont for Sorry, Lords. Honestly, going Fremont against Cute Kittens, it's, it's quite hard. But if they do, uh, do miss some key players on their roster, I can definitely understand more of those picks. Fremont one is going to be the most classic Fremont out of those four Fremonts. Uh, does contain some stream element, does contain some uh, can attack element too, does contain some aim. I think there's a little bit of everything in this Fremont one. Yeah, it's. You got a bit of slider aim, you got, got a bit of blow aim, it's gonna be pretty tricky for those hard art players actually. And this time you should be seeing, I, I, I expect on the at the very least on the side of two kittens, you you should be seeing Lexanox on the hidden, Deppy on the hard rock. Yeah, I mean Lexanox on an HD I think is a given. Uh, the rest of the of the roster they have to hold too, and because this map is seven yard on HR overall, you have to be very careful of what you have to put. And. We do have the rosters ready, soon to be revealed. And Swag Lord potentially with two HDs. Okay. Yeah, here we go. We got a roster of two HDs on the side of Cute Kittens and two Hiddens as well, but one being on Hidden Hard Rock, so it counts as a Hard Rock score actually for Too Slow. So yeah. three Hard Rocks on the side of the Canadian roster of Swag Lords. And that is looking to be a very scary roster on Fremont for Swag Lords, so I really hope that Cute Kittens can make something happen. Not looking so likely so far with the early miss on Ithaca, it's only one miss. But the accuracy yeah. also looking a lot better on the side of Swag Lords. Look at those 99s, look at that SS on the side of Sari in this introduction. Matched by the SS on Hard Rock by Weckle. So far looking very comfortable on this map. 
You're going to be really fine on this map. This map is extremely long. And so uh, you have to be very constant with uh, quite a ton of patterns to potentially come back. Tutsu is going to miss on the HDHR. Have to see if uh, that overmod is going to matter at the end. But so far, those combos are heavily holding for both of the teams. And Xenox is going to find a miss on that HD. And no trade so far on the side of Swaglord is going to be definitely in favor of Swaglord. Yeah, pretty girls gonna match, but he also did see Wegel drop, so. It's only Deffy now, and oh, actually, uh, two miss on Pretty Girl non-cycle, so that's going to even things out a little bit more. With that recovery being started by Lexanox and Weckl, and that big recovery on Nindicolet, trying to back up Deffy's full combo as much as he can, being matched, of course, by Sari. The two star players, Deffy and Sari, doing the work, but no, Deffy's going to miss, actually. That's going to be huge. Sari's going to trade, though. Yeah, Anything can happen. It's now the big combos of Indicolet and too slow. Yeah, those recoveries are good on the set of uh, Indicolites and Lexonox on those HDs, so they could come back. They have to hold for quite a lot of time to potentially have this one. And we're only halfway through the map. Honestly, that match is so interesting that it doesn't it doesn't represent very well the three O lead for Swag Lords. Yeah, definitely not. You cannot trust the scoreline in this matchup. It has been really close on two of these three maps, and now it has been once again very close. Indigo is going to miss. Sorry, he's going to miss once again. It's a slight combo lead in the favor of Swaglords, I believe, but there is a big recovery on Lexanox. Yeah. Right, make something happen. Non-cycle with 400. Pretty Girl with 400 as well. Almost 500, and too slow with big combo. It's not yeah. only Lexanox and Deffy with the big combos on the side of Cube Kid just to make something happen here. Too slow on the HDHR for now is going to be the game changer with the 800 combo on HDHR. For now is going to be the top score of the lobby, but that's not by too much. No money is on 300k. That's that's it. Too slow is going to be on 300k, but those scores are so close. Well, Deffy actually. Wiggle is going to find a miss. Deffy and Deffy, Michael. that's only Lexonox on the side of Kugelens. And if he finds a break, it's going to be quite over. Oh, that flowing pattern. Lexanox is getting through it, but also the, the big combos on Swagglers are going to get through it. And Lexanox is going to miss now, so it's only the big combos on the side of Swagglers. Nothing matching them. Pretty Hero is going to miss. It's too slow as well, but non cycle is here. Sorry is here with the start of recovery to pick up the slack. I think this is going to be a confirmed point for them. It's now 250k difference and rising. Sorry is going to miss, but non cycle is here. Yeah, and as always, we know non cycle. Non cycle being. Very solid in tournaments overall, and it's going to show it once again, potentially with the top score of the lobby. I think that's going to be pretty confirmed. So this 1k combo on this 3 mod 1 on HR, this is quite the impressive score. It's going to miss, but we're going to find that 500k score, which is very impressive on this map. Yeah, it was consistent for contested for a bit, but. Spyglers just took off with the lead towards the end with all those misses on the side of Q-Kids. Unfortunately, the opportunity was there at the start with Lex Knox and the big combo be, being followed by Deffy and Weckl, but those, this three-way miss right before the final Ki sealed the fate for them. It is going to be a fourth point on the board for Team Spyglers. Very, very nice scores overall on the board. We are seeing multiple 500Ks actually on the side of Spyglers on Non-Cycle and Pretty Girl right at the end. And nearly, nearly 500K on Too Slow, so... Yeah, quite a bit more comfortable. Oh, and also, I, I do see a nest rank on the side of Lexanox too. Oh, so yeah, S rank and fortunate. Deppy, actually, as well. Yeah, very unfortunate run for, for Lexanox and too slow. Both of them getting the S rank. I think getting an S rank on this map, considering how the balance can be, I think it's some very impressive scores right there. But that's not going to matter at the end for Lexanox. That was quite the performance, but Sorry, Lord is again going to take this 4-0 lead and now quick kittens they did try aim it almost worked uh maybe they will have to try again with a normal one or gt1 but they have to try once again otherwise i think it's going to be quite doomed those three mods looking really doomed i think overall for quick kittens the those HGs can be so hard, I think, for two students. I don't think they have quite the greatest roster for those HGs. They have to go against for the mechanic. Uh, though I'm starting to wonder if it's at the point of relevancy in any, anymore because you have such a score lead now to come back and 
Having lost both of their picks in such a close fashion, I think that their mental is probably not in the best place right now, so they really need to find something and make a miracle happen. There's going to be a hidden one coming out of Cube Cubes, actually. Hmm, not sure. It's still aim. It's still, it's, it's still yeah, it's still aim, but yeah, hidden is a bit trickier, so... Swine Lord's on, on, on HT, I think, is, is really strong, so... Yeah, it's a bit more of a gimbal. Yeah. I mean, it still works. I, I, st I still think they still have to pick into aim because they almost wanted to own. But it's going to be quite contested. And after they could have, like, if it works, they still have a normal one. Uh, they could try, uh, uh, I don't know, like, Prima 2 by putting quite a lot of HR on, on this, which is going to be way more HR oriented, like, uh, favorite. They could also, again, uh, play that DT1. They could try to play DT3. I think they still have quite a lot of picks if HD1 works. But that's only if HD1 works because if it doesn't, that's going to be match point for Swirl Lords, and at that point, it's going to be quite over. Yeah, it's really, really good. Hard for two kids to find any reason in this matchup, sadly. And what's more frustrating to watch is that the opportunities definitely were there for them, but they slipped away every time and. They really want to reverse that tendency and finally get themselves on the board. Not saying that they can make a full comeback, but at least get a point. And looking at how excruciatingly close it was on some of these picks, it's really frustrating. It would be really hard to see them go out with a 6-0 with how good some of their players have been playing. You're looking at Deppy putting in so much work for his team. Yeah. And uh, we did see uh, uh, Indicolite and Lexonox, both of them being strong on HD. So I think this is those players that we have to look for for cute kittens. On the side of Swallows, we're going to have Jenna Banner and Vesperit uh, playing on that team. Very, very reasonable for HD pick. That's going to be also a custom map from Eumerius. So thanks for mapping this. Yeah, you're just starting to wonder why every time you don't see those full rosters coming in. It's really too bad. I don't know if... They're missing players, or they're just being a skill captain, so they're not playing on the side of cute kittens, but it's really unfortunate. Yeah. I really want to make them to see see them make it happen on this map, but it's not looking likely with how the match has been going so far. Yeah, Saba and Jesse Boti honestly aren't skill captain at all at all, so I think they're just not present for this match. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really unfortunate. unfortunate. Exactly. So far, it's looking like a very slight lead in the favor of cute kittens, but it's only very early in the map, so anything could still happen. Mm, yep, still quite a lot of maps to go. And Double we'll miss on the side, it. triple miss actually on the side of Swagglers, traded by two players, Indicolit and Legsonox. Michael actually, so triple reset, and it's only Deathy and Pretty Girl. And uh, Deathy currently on the SS2. Going to be a one not anymore. One. Deppy is going to find a miss, so that's not going to be an SS at all. And Pretty Girl is going to have quite a room to have the score right now. And so far, it's going to still be a score lead for two kittens, but that's not going to be it anymore. Yeah, Pretty Girl could just run, run away with this with no, no issues whatsoever now. No combos can come to contest on two kittens, sadly. But overall, the team is quite struggling on the side of Swaglord. Th this is why the score isn't on the lead uh, of Swaglord. And we do see a couple of misses. And oh, saw Pretty Girl drop. Yeah, Pretty Girl finding a miss. That's quite huge. And Lexonox, Steffi, and Mokov, uh, the three of them, on uh, around 200, 300 combos, are going to the difference so far. Yeah, the difference maker really, really being slim so far. You're uh, looking at the 30k, 40k margin between these two teams, but once again, the opportunity is here for Cute Kittens to get on the board. There's going to be a double miss on Lexanox and Indicolit. Untraded so far. Yeah, a small trade, but Tusto and Pretty Girl looking for that kind of recovery against Deffy again. Just having quite a performance so far. Reckle is going to find a miss. It's going to be quite a big one, but it's going to be too slow versus Steffi in the match. And I think those scores are going to be quite mattering at the end. And the 
with those misses. He's going to slowly start going back in favor of Swaglord. Specifically too, too slow and Defi matching, but too slow is going to miss now. So the opportunity may be finally here for Q Kittens to get on the board with that big combo on Defi. Yeah, and Defi did stress quite a bit with that key eye. Uh, we did see quite a lot of hundreds on his screen, but he managed to hold on. And that's going to be the difference maker. I was talking about it earlier, just earlier. But Defi. I think that's going to be quite enough. Defi is going to find few Actra, few misses, and printing all with a 300 combo. Vesperate with a 200 combo could come back, but against that, it's going to be Lexonox on the 300 combo. And I think Lexonox could save yeah, this. Vesper is dropping, so Lexonox is holding. As long as he's matching Pretty Girl, the, the score is not going to move. It's still an 87k difference in the favor of Cute Kittens. And as we get towards the end of this map, Cute Kittens are still steadily in the lead. And they might be doing this. We're hitting the final jump patterns. Lexanox is finally going to miss untreated by Pretty Girl, but is it too little, too late? I think this is going to be a first point on the board for Cute Kittens, finally. After two heartbreakingly close maps for, from their picks, we're finally getting a point on the board on the side of Cute Kittens, and what a battle it was. Defi holding as much as he could. Lexanox picking up the slack once Defi had fallen. Amazing performances on both of these players. Being matched by Pretty Girl with a very respectable 500k plus score as well. And Defi just collecting those MVP of the lobbies. Really, so far, the best player in the match. Yeah, so far, definitely Defi on the MVP. In this match, as you mentioned, Lexanox, of course, on HD, did say to the day at the end, if Lexanox wasn't there, it could have come very badly again for Cute Kittens. They're going to have it finally a point on the board. That opens also HD3 later for Cute Kittens in terms of picks. But until then, it's going to be intro to the precision map. Maureen, of course, we didn't talk about it earlier, but there's quite a lot of aim, and that's going to be one of them. And uh, CS 6.5 on HR, quite classic. Yeah, um, so I was trying to get my focus back in check because, of course, the hard rock, uh, hard rock, sorry, the, the nightcore ringing in my ears had. Caught me off guard a little bit, but yeah, it is going to be the precision map. Basically, it's a tricky linear aim map, so very, very aim-focused precision map. So if you're not completely comfortable on those precision requirements, you're going to be having a very bad time on this kind of map. Yeah, that's going to be another custom map uh, from uh, uh, Sakura uh, Uchi Niko. And uh, on Cascada, so very classic Nightcore artist. Overall, just Cascada having quite a lot of Nightcore remix uh, overall. And that's one of them. Ready for love. And who are we going to see for, for that HR2? Of course, on Cute Kittens, there's not a lot of choices at the end of the day. We do, we do see like just pretty much the same players over and over and still no sign of uh, Saba and uh, Angie Zepoti. And so I think it's going to be Pretty much the same rosters for Swag Lords. I think it's going to move quite a bit. But who are we going to see for that HR2? Let's find out. Yeah, it's really not going to be surprising on the side of uh, Cute Kittens. No changes really in the roster to be expected, but Swag Lords obviously picking this map are looking to be pretty comfortable. So we're going to see it's going to be generated over. Pretty girl, sorry, and too slow. Sorry to be expected. Very, very capable hard rock player as well. And of course, the main roster we've seen on the side of Cute Kittens remaining unchanged. And uh, we have seen some notable scores from Weckle, for example, on hard rock. So maybe something could happen there. But on paper, I got to say, it's not looking very favored for Cute Kittens. Yeah, no. I want to put uh, Cute Kittens in a... <laughs> in uh, first place on this H2, but we never know in terms of surprises, but at least on the accuracy department is not going to be it. And so far it's steadily looking in the favor of Swag Lords. Yep, next one is going to find a miss. There was a few misses early on. Defi is going to find also a few misses here and there. Didn't the matter going to trade, but Indicolite is not going to make things easier. It's going to be only Wekel 
on the side of Q Kittens and that's not going to be enough to, to counter Sari. Oh, Sari. We're going to see a uh, double miss actually coming from Sari and Pretty Girl. So maybe something could happen here with the Cabo on Weckle and Defi recovering as well. Never mind. Okay. A full team collapse on the side of Q Kittens. Unfortunately, the quad miss really destroying any chance they had of coming back. And now. It's only Jen and Bender on the on the big combo. That's not that's not a lot, and he's not going to favor our cute kittens. And so your not is looking potentially to have a match point and two match points actually with a on big the lead. Is it already? Yeah, it's looking like a match point more and more as the map goes on. Nothing really happening on the side of Cute Kitten so far to make this a comebackable map. And Defi is trying as hard as he can. Weckle is also trying uh, as hard as he can, despite finding that miss has the highest score in the lobby actually right now, but simply not enough with the consistency on the side of Swag Lords. All scores above 300k. Oh. And also just a miss from uh, Indicolite, a miss from the field, miss from Lexanox, pretty much a full, uh, full man reset on Cute Kittens. Uh, it's just going to be too slow and the banner and putting on with a somewhat combo on this map. Just so it's going to find a mess, but is it going to be even mattering that scoring is at 300k and that's not going to slow down. Yeah, that is going to be a match point for Swag Lords with a 370k difference towards the end. So quite a bit more of comfort on the side of Swag Lords on that precision map. We are going to see a score, maybe several scores. Yeah, several scores reaching the 500k mark on the side of Swag Lords and on the side of Cute Kittens. Only Weckle really contending those top scores for Sari and Jennifer really being comfortable. And even Pretty Girl and Too Slow are not that far behind Weckle, so it was only one player against four really in the comfort zone. And now it is match point. Match point for Swag Lords, and it is going to be Cute Kittens' turn to pick, but it's looking like a dire situation. They didn't manage to get on the board, but sadly, as the roster of maps grows thinner and thinner and the remaining maps the options are not looking too crazy for the side of cute kittens maybe they can mm. make something happen on some of these remaining maps hg3 but, uh, uh, I, 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 I would call the hg3 honestly three, no about one yeah th those picks looks pretty pretty dt1 insta pick actually that makes sense too you know still picking to aim with <laughs> they pick into h01 hd1 dt1 they just you know uh, try the rest and Lexanox is going to drop the shock bar de baiser. Uh, yeah. That's a, that's a, that is a very good, very good uh, reference. I got it. We got it. Of course. Of course we, of got course it. we do. French duo. And, uh, uh, best bro. Alright, mon gars, mon gars. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's enough French for our viewers. <laughs> that's enough French. <laughs> Uh, DT1 uh, again another custom on DT. We don't have a lot of DT customs around in this uh, in this tournament, but this is one of them and uh, very classic. Uh, doesn't have that much on the on the air. Actually, I'm telling bullshit because this is going to be air time on three. Uh, but going to be having quite a bit of tapping. Going to be having quite a bit. Honestly, it's uh, it's pretty balanced as a as a DT1 and. Uh, Oh god, oh, apparently a lot of side wind on the side of Sir Lord. Well, maybe that could be an opportunity maker for Cute Kittens to get a second point. But mm. Yeah, they have been looking quite good so far, Swag Lord, so I wouldn't say that it's all over yet. Yeah. So we're, we're starting to get into those DT ones that if you do have some skill cap issues, it can, like, it can hurt. It can hurt a bit. But here we are in that T1, pretty classic, does does have few tapping, so uh, few tapping elements, so you have to be pretty careful about those. And non-cycle, the spicy both of them are going to be on the lobby again. A swing lord. And uh, pretty much no change on the side of Q Yeah, has to be expected. So do or die now for Q kittens. If you want to win this match, it's going to be all going all the way to tiebreaker, and we're going to see an opening miss from Lexanox here. But so far, the only notable difference in score being on Lexanox. Non-cycle and Lexanox are going to trade now. 
The yeah. accuracy is looking pretty good so far on this side of Swag Lords as Deppy is going to find a second miss. So, Pretty Girl's going to trade that. It's looking pretty even so far with the 50k difference for Swag Lords. White Gold and Sari is going to trade, are going to trade, so it's now only Indicolet and Spicy so far, even trades. Yeah, and Nicolette is going to find a miss, so it's going to be spicy alone. And then Psycho with a with a recovery. Overall, way better for Swag Lords at the beginning of the map. We're actually halfway through the map. Yeah, it's a very short map as well. Uh, yeah, and so honestly, that kind of lead can be detrimental for Swag Lords and put, could potentially win this match on this DT1. Uh, still plenty of map to come back, but. Those combos are really scary, especially on the side of Spicy. If Spicy doesn't break, that's going to be pretty much game over, and that's going to be a slider break, as I call it. Let's go. Yeah, maybe something could happen here, as the lead is decreasing a little bit, but Lexanox and Nicolet with double miss, not going to range really for the side of Cute Kittens. There's going to be a slightly decreasing lead on the combo of Defi, but Defi absolutely has to hold, and that break is probably not going to help him with the nerves. Yeah. So here we go in the second section, the final section of this map, and there is some combo on Pretty Girl and Sorry to match, and Nicola is going to miss once again. Lexanox once again. Oh, a three-way miss across the board Defi for both teams. Defi and it's only Defi now. Defi can yeah. do this. It's only non-cycle with a 200 combo. Oh, yeah. It's only 100k difference. And non-cycle is going to miss. That's the last combo gone for Swag Lords. It could happen. Defi has the combo. He has the opportunity. It's a 50k difference and decreasing 20k 10k is going to flip over to, towards the side of cute kittens just at the end but it's a 3k difference a very Ooh. very very slim difference oh that was and, that, uh... and all those misses made it really close but defi got the job done it is going to be an 11k difference for the side of cute kittens the one miss on defi 850k plus what a performance well it's literally a wake up babe uh defi did Another top of the lobby again. Uh, he's been on a roll since the beginning of the match and did save this DT1. Honestly, without Defi, this DT1 oh, that was, was, over. So, was so far gone. Was so uh, far gone. It was but over. Yeah, the 700k on Spicy as well. So, Spaglers really were looking overall like the more consistent team. They may have been, but Defi was here to hard carry and get a second point on the board for his team. It is not over yet. Not over, but, but I mean, I, I see like, I, I see those free mods still open, like free mod 4, I think for Twilight is incredible. Uh, no mod 5 is still open for Twilight. Well, yeah, that could be a good pick as well, the gimmick. But yeah, I mean, that gimmick is a little bit more special, I think, than most of gimmicks that we've known so far. It's mostly going to be a stress control, I would call it because of some patterns that we will mention if it's going to be picked. But other than that, I think no much more could be okay for them. GT3 is Gamble. GT3 uh, is Gamble. GT3 uh, okay. is Gamble, but it, they are going for the Gamble, apparently. But as you mentioned, they still have quite a few options open, but GT3 maybe not looking on paper like the safest one, but it's going to be their choice and Oh, oh yeah, I mean, I didn't mention about Gamble, but at the same time, Lexanox say, is saying, uh, oh no. Uh, yeah, he's I not a speed player. Yeah, if I remember correctly, Lexanox is not the biggest speed player overall, and Lexanox is definitely going to play this map, because there's not a lot of Rust left for two kittens. And so, already with that in mind, I can see why Swaglo uh, decided to pick into this. Yeah, Lexanox not being a speed player is what in French we would call an euphemisme. Yeah, true, 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 true. Yeah, he's, he's really not comfortable in that skill set. I mean, he will fill in for DT in his teams when there's a lack of players, but it's really not especially. You're looking at Lexanox for those gimmick hero maps, those hidden maps, definitely not the speed requirement. And well, we'll see once again a save from Duffy, or is it going to be game over? But Defi has been playing out of his mind in this match. I really, really hope we see another pop-off performance from him. Uh, I mean, if he do pop, uh, pop off, then it's going to be potentially another point on the board for Cute Kittens, but he has to perform once again. You know, at some point it's going to be pretty hard. Pretty hard for, for Cute Kittens as far as the match goes. You know, sometimes it's not going to work. Maybe it's going to work once again on that on that pick, on that DT3. But he has to hold. 
And on the side of Sword Lord, we have a, a, a spirit spicy to some pretty girl to counter those scores. And ah, I think that's going to be quite hard. Yeah, also, not the longest map in the world. And we are going to see already some accuracy differences in the lobby. The map up here. So far, no big noticeable discomforts on the side of Cute Kittens, but it's still the miss on Lexanox being traded by Too Slow, actually, so even on the combo aspect, not anymore with Ridiculate missing. But Too Slow is finding repeat uh, repeated misses, so... Vesper is going to trade. Defi's going to miss, sadly. So yeah. it's, o it's only Lexanox, not anymore, actually. It's only Weckl with a one remaining full combo to match Pretty Girl and Spicy. Spicy's going to miss. That's going to make one of them, but... It is still Pretty Girl matching Weckl and the slightly heavier consistency on the side of Swaggler is out. Defi, Lexanox, and Indicola are finding a lot of misses. This is very tense though. Like Defi is looking for a comeback. Pretty Girl versus Weckl. Uh, Weckl has been performing quite good so far in this match, but we do see tr actually shaking quite a bit on those uh, on those patterns. And that can pretty be Girl's gonna miss. Pretty Girl is going to miss. Actually, it's going to be the no, most No, Weckl's going to trade. But Defi's here. Defi's here, once again. Defi is here. Worry. Don't worry, we have Defi. It's literally the cute kittens. Uh, yeah, that's their <laughs> moto. They, they got motto. Defi. And Defi <laughs> with Nicolet with the 200 combo as well. No combo whatsoever on the side of Spike Lords. And Lexanox is going to find repeated misses, but it's quite ir irrelevant right now as Esper is going to miss once again. And Defi is still here to hold. Weko started the job, and Defi is going to finish it. And yeah. with that. Nearly 200k lead is looking so likely that we're going to see a third point on the side of Cute Kittens and a first break point for them, actually. Uh, it's going to be another wake up babe. Uh, Defi popped the lobby once again. Uh, it has been for this point the entire time. Defi is going to find a miss. That can be a bit dangerous, but on the side of Swordlord, we only have Spicy with a 400 combo, but that's not There's going not to be enough. Time. There's not enough time. There's not enough map. There's not enough things to come back and the final spinner is going to decide it all. Kyrians is going to find their first break point, as you mentioned, in this match. They could come back. They could, they could actually come back and they, they, save an k from Defi. What is he doing? They could be doing this. Defi is ridiculous right now. He's been MVPing literally almost every single map in this match so far, and he's not looking like he's going to slow down. The one miss once again, same as on DT1. Once again, the carry performance coming out of Defi. Weckl also got a really, really nice score, topping any score on the side of Squaglords, actually. So, despite Legs and Ox and Indicolis struggling a bit more, it was really two big pop-off performances on their side, and it was more than enough to make it this, to make this happen for them. Yeah. Now, overall, Squaglords may be missing that Defi because, you know, it's way more comfortable for Kukians right now. Because when you have a carry player, like Duffy, you, you can feel a bit less stressed. And that could be an advantage for some of the picks that could come next. Uh, the, it has to go for normal one. Look at those picks. No mode 3, HR1, HT1, TT1, no mode 1. They, they were like, okay, so we're going to pick into mechanics. Here's what's gonna happen. We're going to pick into him. Uh, is, is it sounding good? And they said yes, and that's what happened. Yeah, that, at the at this point in the match, picking no more one is really really courageous because you're asking for like a pressure map, and this is it. That's like the four minutes long stress map, basically consistency, the consistency trial looking to be on paper in the favor of cute kittens with how how they've been playing so far, starting to come back in this match, but it is not going to be free by any means. No, it's not. And also, we have like few patterns overall in the like some some streams, very 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 low uh, streams. Honestly, in terms of, of the patterns, they can be a bit awkward. And so, if you continue to miss on those, uh, you can literally stop your uh, your your score literally at 300k just because of those patterns. If you cannot play those patterns, on other aspects, it's full or aim. Full world aim and a lot of one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three going all over the screen, and that's going to be that. And uh, too slow? Uh, yeah, too slow is uh, seeming to take a 
Take, take his merry time to get in the lobby, but... We're gonna be gaining this map. There we go. Uh, are we going to see in the port? Is I, in here? I think we might. I think we might see an abort, yes. Yeah, I think he got disconnected or something. Oh, we're struggling to get his... Oh, PC crash. Okay. Ah, oh, PC crash. That's unfortunate. You don't oh, yeah. want this to happen when you're about to start the map. Especially with that amount of stress. Honestly, good killings with those kind of performance could come back in the match. And so, Swag Lords, still on match point, you know, still really comfortable. Team is secured. Everything's fine, but your kids looking for a potential comeback is not the most pe peaceful thing that could happen to you. Definitely not. Definitely not. It's really looking like you can make, could make this happen, and I'm really, I'm all up for it because honestly, who wouldn't want to see a tiebreaker? True. Oh, that that team is insane. I, yep. I really want to say those those teams since the beginning of the tournament aren't being played so far uh, uh, at least one at least one we we got custom songs we got custom maps and let us actually play the cd yeah you really want to see it because those custom songs as you said have all been huge bangers and those maps have been going absolutely nuts so i'm definitely all up for it it's up to the players now to see if we're going to see it or not this tp we still have a bit of a way to go through because it was a big 5-1 to one lead in a favor of Wacklers, decreasing up 5-3 to three now, so... The comeback has begun, but is it going to go all the way? Nothing is less certain, and of course we both want to see it, but... It's up to the players on this Nomad 1 map, which could very well be the difference maker, the turning point in this match. And we are going to get started. PC crash issues are over, we are going to get in this map and is going to be the huge difference maker in this matchup. Yep. And a uh, pretty classic normal one, honestly. But we are going to see some uh, pretty much cross-screen jumps sometimes. Uh, those patterns that can be very awkward also to eat on some streams elements. I'm not going to do that. But here we are. In this number one, could uh, could be the sign of the comeback, or it could be the end of, of the match. Yep, here we go. It's uh, quite nerve-wracking, honestly. I'm. I don't know how the players are gonna play decently because I already can't think with all the stress. True. <laughs> true, true, true. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's going to be number one, the most uh, number one of number one. And Indicolite is going to be the first one to miss. Not going to be too bad of a miss, but that map not going to be too long for a normal one, honestly. And here we are into the first game very soon. Yeah, we're reaching the first guy. As you said, only one miss so far inside of Indicolite. Being traded now by Too Slow and on Cycle. That could be the start of something for Cute Kittens. And Weckle's gonna trade one of them on this flow pattern. Not the worst thing in the world, not the best either. Exonox is going to find a miss. And it's going to be Steffi versus Gender Bender. Uh, band, uh, not Gender Bender anymore, but Pretty Girl versus Steffi. We do see quite a lot of 1v1 between Steffi and Pretty Girl, but this time Steffi is going to lose it. And Pretty Girl is going to be on the wall with uh, that SS going on. Yeah, and so far, it's looking like a losing battle for the side of two kittens. It's not over yet, of course. This map is very long, so you have plenty of time to see anything happen. And Nicolette is going to be pretty much the biggest combo on the side of two kittens. Plus, it's going to be a lot to contest. Pretty your FC. And non like on the recovery 2, so on the recovery of Gen Miller on the recovery 2. Going to be quite hard, I think, for Kudinans and both Defi and Indicolet are going to break. Work all definitely showing on that pattern. I did mention oh it, but that's God, going to be game changing. On the it's side of Kudinans. Yeah. And that's looking really, really dire as Pretty Girl is still holding on the magnificently to this full combo and amazing accuracy as well. Jennifer backing her up. Yep. And 
It's it, it's looking really really dire for cute kittens. Unfortunately, no combo to speak of. Yeah, I think she is going to carry this one home. This time, Deppy <laughs> Deppy Curry is not going to work, and Pretty Girl is going to take this one home. Ten minute also with a 500 combo in case Pretty Girl falls. There. Yeah, you don't want to call it too early, but it's looking so unlikely for Cute Kittens to make anything happen with those recoveries, basically bordering 250-300 combo and this huge full combo on Pretty Girl still holding and Jenna better with the recovery, even too slow and non-cycle matching the best combos right now on the side of Cute Kittens. It's a 450k near difference and only rising as we reach the final quarter of this map, so sadly I think I'm going to call it, I yeah. think it's over. It's over. Uh, there's not enough map and just pretty goal still on the FC uh, is just going to be it. Uh, the question is though, can they do it? Pretty goal and FC, yeah, that's that's the question. And FC on yeah. number one, always nice to see. And with beautiful accuracy added that. Jennifer Render also with a great recovery. And we are going to see a few more misses on the side of cute kittens actually with Michael and Indicola dropping so. If it wasn't all the oh my god really is now and the patterns are being hit by everyone actually on the side of Swag Swaglord so a massive mispick on the side of cute kittens for the final pick of this map non cycle is finally gonna miss but three of these players getting through it on the oh, side of Swaglord I come undo it oh and it is gonna be a full it. combo pretty girl coming out with the FC GG well played Ending out this ending this match with a beautiful score, and look at this accuracy as well. I mean, if you're comfortable on these Nomad ones, having high accuracy is fairly common to see. But very very nice score, and very nice back end combo on the side of Gender Bender as well. Only only the one miss, and yeah, there was really nothing that could be done on the side of Cute Kitten. Sadly, nearly a million different towards the end of the map. So that's going to be that for this match, and. I will applaud the attempt for Cute Kittens starting this comeback, rising back up to 6-3, to three, but it's still going to be the win for the Team Swag Lords, who have been playing very, very good. And we haven't really seen all of their players playing many maps. Donnit, for example, has not appeared in this match, unless I'm mistaken. No. I think that, that was actually the only player that was missing for Swag Lord so far. But they're still going to be in loser bracket, unfortunately, for Cute Kittens, yeah. they're going to be odd. And honestly, Tournament. such a good match from Cute Kittens when you consider that they only had four players today. Oh my god. Oof. Yeah, still getting three points on the board. And man, Deffy with that amazing performance, definitely the MVP of this matchup. Deffy has been absolutely incredible. Did everything he possibly could for this matchup, but simply not going to be enough for his team. And they are going to yep. be eliminated. With a top 24 finish for Cute Kittens, Swagglers are going to advance to the loser's bracket. For at least a top 16 finish in this tournament. Yeah, and could also search for more. I think they, they have the, the core roster for it. Uh, I don't know about the, the skill cap. Maybe it's going to be a prime at some point. But so far, it's going to work for the, that quarter final uh, uh, map pool. And the question is uh, will they have a match against who? Who will be the, op the opponent? That is a very interesting question, and I do not have the answer. Is it uh, <laughs> between uh, Nipis Madu and uh, Fanny Bumble? I think it's Nipis Madu and Fanny Bumble. So I think that match is already over. Nipis Madu won 6 against 2. Uh, no, actually, it is not going to be Nipis Madu. Uh, oh. It is going to be Swaglords facing the winner of the Polish team versus Germany LWCB. Oh, yeah, true. The GWG versus. Uh... <laughs> Germany, yeah, WCB. that Polish name, which I'm not going to try and say. And Germany, OWCB, battling it out to know who's going to face off against Swag Lords for the top 16 and top 12 off potentially finish. Yep. So those matches to be followed. As for this one, is going to be about it. Yep. And uh, we already have a, a match going on for Kamba Chile versus uh, Super Humbunger. So we're going to switch this uh, one. Uh... And uh, I think Subaru is going to be it for you. Thanks for yep. casting. That's going to be all it for me. Thank you very much. And uh, good luck, Bristol, for your following casts. No, thank you very much.